hi and welcome back to part three. Uh, I'm just going to get straight on with it. The first one I've got is a Charles Dickens adaption, Bleak House. It's one of his books that I hadn't heard of, uh, but picked it up mainly because I'm a big fan of Gillian Anderson, a big X-Files fan, um, and it being a period drama, I thought I might like it, and I really did like it. This was um, a really gritty kind of storyline, and you don't always get that with period dramas. Sometimes they are very slow and there's nothing too intense that happens. But this definitely had a, a quite intense storyline, and um, you know it kept you on the edgy seat sort of thing, and I really liked that. It was different to a lot of things I'd seen at that stage, and I've since you know, sought out more uh, along those kind of lines um, and sort of developed my taste in that area because the majority of things I watched up until this stage were Jane Austen adaptions, um, you know, maybe... Um, just just really sort of slow that I kind of liked that slow period dramas I liked that kind of feel but I've since found that there's a lot of other stuff to offer in that area um and the next one I've got is called 20,000 Streets Under the Sky um based on a book written by Patrick Hamilton it's basically three stories set in 1930s London and I think there's something that links them all together it's a while ago since I saw this I think I might actually watch this one again today seeing it again I've I thought I really want to watch that again because I remember really really liking it um, and I believe Sally Hawkins is in this one. Yeah, she's in this one too. Um, this actually could be the first thing I saw her in. Um, I think actually it was. Uh, and like I said, I always thought she stood out as a really great actress. Uh, but I'd recommend that one. It's a bit later than some of the other ones I've shown, um, like I said, in the 20th century. But uh, this was, a, again, quite a gritty storyline. Um the next one is Dr. Zhivago, and I know there's a big film version, obviously, of it, uh, which I've seen, but I actually preferred this, and that's probably an unpopular thing to say. I like Kira Knightley. Um, I thought it was really well made, and I just thought the pacing was a little bit more bearable for me. There were definitely things in the film I thought were better, but overall, I enjoyed this a little bit more. I found it a little bit easier to watch so I'd recommend that if you like the film version just to check it out maybe you won't think it's as good but um, I did see this one first so maybe that's got something to do with it I, I watched the other one after seeing this one and as I said I, I do like Kira Knightley so I think that might have had something to do with it uh, the next one I've got is Mal Flanders which has got Alex Kingston in also uh, Daniel Craig probably one of his earlier things the, one of the earliest things I remember seeing him in and this is probably the second period drama that I ever saw after um, Pride and Prejudice um, and obviously really different this is an 18, it's quite um, it's got a lot of sex and things in it so it was really different I think I was about 14 or 15 when I saw this and I found it quite shocking at that age um, but this is a really interesting one, it's it's basically about the life of Mal Flanders and she goes through all kinds of things but this was the first time I saw Alex Kingston as well and I've come to love her a lot more since then because I would love her in Doctor Who. Um, but I liked her from then. I thought she was so cool after seeing her in this. And then I saw her in ER and she's been in lots of other things. But this was the first time I remember seeing her and thought, you know, she was a really good actress. And this stood out to me um, from anything else I'd seen. Um, so I'd recommend this one. I don't, I don't know um, if that many people have heard of it now, unless you obviously saw it at the time. But... Um, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely recommend that one. Um, and the next one is North and South. This is probably um, in my top ten, definitely, of period dramas. This was a really gripping storyline. I remember watching, I think this was in episodes, because some of them are, are just sort of one um feature length uh, one but I, yeah I think this is four episodes and I watched them all in one go because I couldn't stop watching it it was um, a really solid storyline again this is about five years ago I watched it so um, it is a bit vague what I'm saying but uh, I really did love it at the time and I really do need to watch it again I've watched it twice I think I think I watched it um, with it twice within like three months and I haven't watched it since but I think this is what I need to check out again soon because I remember this being one of the be better ones that I'd seen. Um, the next one, Test of the D'Urbervilles. This is also probably in the top ten. Um, again, with Gemma Arterton in. Um, she used to do a lot of this kind of thing before she started being in films. Uh, and I thought she was great when I saw this. And I read the book after this as well because I really, really liked the storyline. And it's quite an emotional one and it's quite sad in parts and things, but... 
Uh, this was uh, definitely one of the more gritty storylines again, um, unlike some of maybe the Jane Austen ones that are a bit slower paced and they're not they're not super gritty storylines. They're quite laid back. Um, this has definitely got some uh, dark, darker sort of themes in it. Uh, the next one I've got is Jane Eyre. I've got two adaptions of this. Uh, I'm not too bothered about any of the other adaptions that I've seen available to watch them. I like both of them, and I think this has got a really great cast, but I think I preferred the other one. I just felt it was felt more like Jane Eyre to me. But this really has got a good cast, and uh, I think they all did a good job. Uh, sorry about the lighting, it's just gone really dark for some reason, I don't know why. Um, but it was still a really good adaption. I just think this one which um, has got uh, Ruth Wilson in, was just a slightly better version for me, just because it felt more Jane Eyre to me. Um, they're very similar. Uh, I think actually even some of the filming was done in the same location which I visited, and I can recognise some of the places. They even, you know, they used a few of the same locations. And the other one's probably got a bigger budget and slightly better made, but it, this just felt more Jane Eyre. Um, and then the next one, oh, I'll find her. Uh, the next one I've got is The Fingersmith, which is based on a Sarah Waters book. And as far as I know, all of her books, but all of the other ones, um, the adaptions that I've seen, are normally based around a, a lesbian relationship, which is interesting in the context of a period piece. Um, I mean, that's not the main focus of it for sure. This one's got such a great storyline, it's got a massive twist i think it's two or three episodes and i was so so gripped by this uh so it's kind of as the relationships do in any film that's kind of um takes a back seat in a way to the other storyline but i would highly highly recommend this one it's such a good plot and it surprises me every time i watch it for some reason even though i kind of know the plot t- twist is coming it always surprises me and I'm, i always think it's so good um, and this has also got Sally Hawkins in, uh, Imelda Staunton, um, Charles Dance. Uh, but I'd say this is when her career started to take off probably after this and she started to do less of this kind of thing. Um, but as I've said before, I, I just kept thinking Sally Hawkins was so good. Um, the next one I've got is another Sarah Waters one which I picked up after Loving the Fingersmith. Um, this wasn't quite as good as that. It wasn't quite as much to my taste, maybe. This was definitely more um, humorous in parts. That was quite a serious crime-ish based drama. This was um, a bit more uh, on a sort of... Well, no, it had some quite gritty things, but it was slightly more uh, steering towards humour in parts um, and there were some parts that I did think were a bit silly at the time however I've come to like it more the more times I've watched it because I know what it's about and I, I know what to expect and um, I, I've sort of, I, so I enjoy it more each time I see it um, this has also got a really good cast though as well I really really like Keely Cole she's in a lot of my favourite TV shows um, and I'm also a big fan of Rachel Sterling, uh, of what I've seen her in. I've seen her in a few things, but I particularly liked her in the Bletchley Circle. Uh, and then finally, oh no, I've got two more. Uh, then I've also got The Handmaiden, which is, I think, a Korean film. I feel like it is. No, I'm not so sure. I'm pretty sure it's a Korean film, although some of it is in Japan as well. And it's the language is Korean and uh, Japanese. Um, this is also based on the novel Fingersmith. It's very different to Fingersmith, so I still didn't know exactly where the plot was going because it didn't even feel like the same book to me. I think they've used elements or the pinpoint, you know, the main plot points um, as part of this, but it's obviously very different. It's set in a different culture. It's also about a, a different subject. The, the key theme is the same, but I kind of forgot that when I was watching it and still didn't really know where it was going. This is really good, but I was really shocked when I first watched it about what it was actually about. Uh, but I would highly recommend that one if you like foreign films. Uh, and then finally, Fanny Hill. Um, I actually don't really know a lot about the book or even who it's by, and I don't think it says anywhere on the case. 
Um, it says who it's adapted by, but I'm not 100% who the book's by. Um, this was actually really good as well. Basically, it's about a young girl who kind of falls into the life of a uh, falls into a life of prostitution, um, and it was actually really good. I liked the way they dealt with it, sort of thing. And um, it's a long time ago since I saw it, but I think I'm going to watch this one again soon as well um, because I can't fully remember everything about it. I just remember that I did really enjoy it. Um, and again, this is one of the more sort of uh, grittier kind of storylines maybe for a period drama. So I'm going to leave it there for that part and I'll see you in part four. Bye!